which test is done in maxillofacial injury they have given you an image okay the options are lid laxity test hess test force duction and bowstring test now without even coming back to the answer first we will uh, see what are the different types of test okay uh, so in this question which test is done in maxillofacial injury coming to the option force duction test okay so this is your force duction test what is being done here is in force duction it is a it's a very useful test for distinguishing the uh, restrictive and neurogenic cause of ophthalmoplegia okay so i am giving you very very basic ideas or basic concept where you have to understand what it is basically okay force duction test differentiate with di differentiates between your neurogenic and your restrictive ophthalmoplegia okay it is particularly useful differentiating a medial wall blow fracture with medial rectus entrapment okay uh, basically you will see whether your muscle entra entrapment okay uh, it will help in assessing the differentiating between your neurogenic and your mechanical restriction okay and uh, one thing that you have to know is if the test is negative if the test is negative it is a neurogenic it's a positive it is restrictive of thalmoplegia of thalmoplegia okay it is majorly useful for differentiating a medial blow fracture medial blow blood fracture and medial rectus entrapment and sixth cranial palsy okay next coming back to the second option uh, force duction is done so this is not force duction okay then what is this lid laxity lid laxity test this is only the lid laxity test this test is performed uh, the lid laxity lid laxity test okay this is not lid laxity but we are we are going to read what is this lid laxity test lid laxity test is performed by pulling your see this is only lid laxity lid laxity is performed by pulling your lower eyelid okay uh, from away from your eye and assessing how quickly and easily the eyelid return back to its normal position okay during this test if the patient needs to blink for the eyelid to return to its original then the laxity of the lower lid uh, eyelid or the canthal tendon is pre present basically what you have to do is you have to pull your lower eyelid lower eyelid of the patient and assess how quickly it returns back to its original position right this is only lid laxity okay force duction is this one and lid laxity is this one then what is this hess test hess test you have a chart okay test is performed with each eye okay it is done at 50 cm you have to understand few things this is done at 50 cm distance you patient will wear red and green glass one on red and one on, one eye red and one eye green glass okay eye to be tested should have a green glass okay whatever we are testing it should have green glass and uh, the chart has an the chart will have an electronically operated board with small red and uh, red lights okay patient what they do no the patient is asked to place green light in in each of points okay in every point you have to place a each of points on red light as as seen see what is what is happening is they you will ask the patient to place green light in each of the points okay you will point out this point and ask the patient to place your uh, green light next the goggles are changed and you have to perform the test right this is how you have to do and this is majorly for investigating your binocular vision okay binocular vision and during this hess test you can uh, detect your abnormal movements okay coming to the last option and the correct option for our for our question is bowstring test what is this bowstring test this in this bowstring it's a very simple thing the low lid is 
what they'll do, no, they they will pull this lead laterally, okay, but they'll uh, palpate the tendon also to detect the moment of fracture segments. Okay, if you have a lack of resistance or your movement of a bone underlying, it indicates that you have a fracture. Okay, now what are the other things that you have to know in bowstring is, see, uh, your nasoethmoidal fracture. Uh, how will you identify? You have to first examine your mobility, crepitus. Okay, that is not all there. But the the status of this, what do you call medial canthal ligament? You call it as MCT, medial canthal attachment to the bone is very very easy, and this you have to identify by something called bowstring test. In this, in this, what they'll do? No, the lateral canthal ligament is there. No, the lateral canthus is grasped. They will grasp this lateral canthus, and they'll displace it laterally. Okay, they will palpate the tendon simultaneously. That is the medial can tendon. They'll palpated simultaneously lateral displacement of the medial canthal ligament suggests a compromised bony attachment you understood so especially in case of an acute edema or conscious patient this is very very easy to perform in an operating room the status of your median canthal ligament you have to assess by placing an instrument in the nose under your MCT. See, if the patient is conscious, you can just pull the uh, lid laterally and you have to palpate the tendon. If the patient is in an unconscious or in an operating room, then you have to place an instrument un in the nose under your bony medial canthal ligament. But still, you have to palpate simultaneously the tendon area from outside. Okay. Outside, then your manipulation of the instrument will help the help to understand the status of your medial canthal ligament very very easy right very very easy you have to pull the ligament laterally and you have to palpate the tendon area that's it it is very very easy so the answer right answer for this is your bowstring test it is done in case of nasoethmoidal fracture okay you you know you have learned all the types of the other options as well lid laxity lid laxity test Okay, HES test, HES test, use, it is used for binocular vision, forced oxygen test, restrictive and neurogenic ophthalmoplegia. So, the correct answer for this is bowstring test.